Rangers will uh, continue our uh, video post for the summer. And uh, today we'll be talking about athletic excellence in this blog, of course, talking about the various excellences of life and the many goods of life. Athletic excellence surely deserves a place in our, um, in our discussion here. And uh, particularly now when there are so many sports on, uh, um, going on at the same time, we have the World Cup Finals, we have the World Cup, and not the finals, but the World Cup, the NHL Finals just, just concluded with uh, my home city, L.A., winning. We had uh, the NBA Finals. We have baseball going on, the regular season, the interminable regular season in baseball. And so, so many sports on right now where athletes are competing. Have we ever tried to think about what these athletes are really doing with their lives? Uh, are they pursuing excellence? Or are they just running around senselessly on a field or an ice rink? running after a ball or puck for no reason. Uh, if we think they are pursuing excellence, well, what kind of excellence is it? How are they pursuing excellence? Uh, what does it even mean to be within a, this, what I would call the zone of athletic excellence? What does that mean? How can one be in that zone? And how many adults that are, uh, to sort of first glance, that seem to be doing sports are actually pursuing athletic excellence? Um, some other questions you could pose in this area would be, obviously, how, how, uh, how hard should one work to achieve athletic excellence? Uh, there are many, very, very few people that are just naturally gifted in any sort of athletic thing, and even if they are, they have to work very hard to bring that natural gift to its fruition. So how hard should you work to, to achieve athletic excellence? And how good is it compared to many of the other excellences one could achieve? What's sort of distinctive about athletic excellence that that is not found in some of the other excellences that we've discussed. Um, before getting to these questions though, I want to debunk straight off so a very common, some very common what I would call mis misperceptions uh, on thinking on, on, on athletes and what they do and, 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 and issues of that sort. And uh, it's a very common, common sort of voiced uh, criticism or perception of athletes in that they are overpaid uh, lazy and lucky bastards that get fame and fortune to quote play a game while everyone else works hard to, uh, works hard and makes pennies on the dollar compared to athletes and you know it's claimed that this is unjust you know teachers and nurses or surgeons or all these other people they should make so much more and get so much more fame than athletes why is it that athletes get the fame and, and the people that seem to be doing really socially useful things like teachers and nurses they get never noticed, they don't get paid, and, and, uh, and so on and on. And I think while this perception has been very common, I think it's largely asinine on many levels. First, most athletes don't make tons of money. In fact, most athletes make nothing. Uh, most, most athletes make nothing, whether college athletes or semi-pro or, or, uh, or minor league athletes. Most of them either make nothing or they make a uh, minimum wage, very, very low amount. So only a very, very small minority of athletes make, make the big money that people think about, the millions and uh, many millions that, that is reported in the news. And I would argue they've earned it. They are way, 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 I can't even put enough ways to emphasize how way off the bell curve of achievement they are in what they do. Um, uh, it's not even, sometimes it's not even... Uh, I uh, can't even comprehend how much better they are at what they do than the average person doing that activity. Uh, and if they fall even a slight wee bit from that very high level off the bell curve, they lose their job and they get cut and they don't make the big bucks anymore. So I don't see a huge injustice in, in this whole thing of compensating someone that is just superlative beyond um, most, uh, way, way superlative in what they do uh, and rewarding them for that. Um, and of course, if you want to make that kind of money, if you are whatever you're doing, and you want to, you think athletes are being paid too much. Of course, you have the, you have the freedom to try to be better than the athletes, and uh, and to be better at what they do. You can go and start training, and and uh, and of course, you're going to have to be better at what they do, not just in the activity, but doing it in front of all the thousands of people in the stands or the millions of people watching on TV. So you're going to have to do it um, in front of people as well. And uh, nothing prevents you from trying to compete with these people, but I think you'll see very quickly that it's very unlikely you will be better on a consistent basis 
uh, in front of thousands of people than most pro athletes and what they do. Um, so this perception, we could continue, I mean this perception also that athletes are overpaid, lazy, lucky bastards, um, this perception also suggests that sort of athletes have it easy in some way, but in fact there's nothing easy about excelling in most sports. Uh, you could go through almost every sport and you quickly see how difficult doing the activity at a high level is. Running a marathon in, for example, two hours and 30 minutes or two hours and 20 minutes or less, that's very, very difficult. Um, that's 26 miles at about five minute 20 pace. Uh, I think if you went into most offices in America and you picked people at random, you'd be lucky to find maybe two or three people out of 100 that could run maybe two miles for seven minutes, maybe. And, and these guys are running five minute miles for 26 miles. Um, the Tour de France is not easy. It's 2,200 miles in three weeks. There's nothing easy about that. The grueling demands on the body um, over hilly terrain and etc. They often, in the tour actually, they often go downhill at 65 miles per hour. Now that's not necessarily difficult from a physical standpoint of pumping the pedals, but the, the mental um, concentration required to be able to stand going that fast on a bike uh, when, when a fall would really hurt you uh, is, is not easy. Uh, hitting a 95 mile per hour fastball where nine fielders are not uh, is not easy. Um, accurately returning a 100 mile per hour serve uh, for hours in a tennis match is not easy. So to do any of these things, I would argue, and to remain in a type of physical con condition where, can, where you can do these things consistently um, in competing with people that are just as elite as, uh, as you are, there's nothing easy about this kind of repetitive activity. Um, if these activities were easy, no one would, I think, have much interest in them, no one would watch these sports, no one would pay a lot of money to, uh, to, uh, to watch the, the competitions, and no one would pay the athletes a lot to engage in the activity. So no one watches, for example, uh, for example, no one watches an average office person send out email after email. Why is that? Why is it no one is, has any interest to pay anybody, any office uh, corporation, and, and to go sit there and watch someone craft emails hour after hour? Well, one, the activity is extremely dull, but more importantly, it's, it's, I think people have this, if they were posed with that hypothetical, they would say, look, you know, it's not that difficult to, to craft these kind of emails. I can do it myself. But, but shooting a, you know, 27 put three pointer with, with the time running out, that's difficult. And that's why I want to pay and watch that thing. I want to pay to see, see if someone can do that thing under pressure. So let's shift. We've been talking a lot about the pros. Let's shift our, uh, our focus from the pros to the average Joe now, or the average Jane. What about this average mythical Jane or Joe uh, that perhaps occasionally takes up cycling or running or tennis or, or myriad other sports? What are the chances this person will ever become good enough to go pro or win any significant kind of race, even with sort of diligent training? I would argue that answer is next to zero. Uh, there's next to zero chance, one of those point oh 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 all the zeros, one percent chance that this kind of person will become a pro. Uh, one person wins the Tour de France or the Boston Marathon a year. Sometimes it's the same person that won it last year, but there are many millions and millions of cyclers and runners out there, so obviously the chances are very, very low that you'll ever get paid or that you'll ever be good enough to go pro in any of these activities. So once you establish that as the framework, not going to get paid, okay? Not going to get paid, not going to go pro, not going to get much fame or or um, attention from it. So then why, and the question really starts to become serious, then why, why try to get better at this activity that you're doing, whether running, cycling, tennis, whatever, skiing. Uh, and I think it's this kind of mentality, um, it's this mentality which has some logical basis that I think prevents most people from pursuing athletic excellence. And I'll, disting, I'll define that term clearly in a way where you'll see what I mean. Um, you can pursue... You can, you can engage in a sport, for example, cycle once in a while without um, pursuing at the athletic excellence within the activity of cycling. I'll describe that in a second. But the perception or the, or, or the thought pattern seems to be, you know what, I'm never going to get paid for this, I'm never going to win a big race, so why try to bother getting better anyways? I can just do a few miles, run a few miles, or cycle a few miles here and there on a Saturday or Sunday if, and this is a big if, if I've got nothing else going on, I've got 
things with work tied up, no social activities. You can go out there and run a few miles, no big deal. Um, strut around town in a cool bike or cool running shoes, get, maybe get noticed here and there, and get out there in the sun. It's not bad. I'll go to sort of an easy, leisurely place, won't really tax the body that much, and enjoy the activity. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to try to excel at it. That seems to be the common pattern and uh, common thought pattern. I'm going to achieve, um, what, with respect to achievement, I'm going to achieve the common benefits from the activity. We all know what these are from athletic activity. What are the common benefits? Well, they're legit. They're not fake. You know, you f your health improves your health. You l might, might lose a few pounds here or there, start to look a little better, get out of the house, get in the sun more, socialize with others, doing the activity perhaps. And these are all benefits of doing uh, sport. But here I want to discuss athletic excellence. But if these are your prime motivations, either um, just getting out of the house, losing some weight, doing it for your health, doing it to look good, doing it to socialize with others, or just doing it because you've got nothing else to do. Um, uh, if these are your main uh, motivations, you are not within the zone of athletic excellence. You're not even at the beginning point or the beginning gate of uh, athletic excellence. Um, uh, you're you're out. You're far out of this zone if these are your main motivations. So, what is athletic excellence, and why is it that I would say that someone doing this sport, even for many years, for those kinds of reasons, would not be pursuing athletic excellence? And I think the best way to describe it is to say that athletic excellence is actually attained um, is attained by someone that has sort of a serious, continuous. Um, not a couple months or even probably not even a couple years, but has a serious continuous motivation to excel in an athletic activity for its own sake through the use of physical skill, mental foresight, and dedication over a very long period of time. Uh, let me repeat that again. Athletic excellence is attained by someone that has a serious continuous motivation to excel in an athletic activity for its own sake through the use of physical skill, mental foresight, and dedication over a very long period of time. That's it. So if you're doing the activity for money or socialization or to lose weight or to look cool, whatever it is, or because it's the new in thing, then you're not within the zone of athletic excellence. I hope I've made that clear. So it's obvious, I think, from my remarks that athletic excellence must be worked for very hard, uh, very, uh, very, um, um, in a very challenging way, and it's grueling and it's demanding and all the rest. So again, why bother? Why bother with af pursuing athletic excellence? Why, amongst all the things you could do with your time, all the athletic, all the different goods of life, and all the different excellences you could pursue, why make a significant investment in athletic excellence? Which, again, most people, I would argue, do not. Even, even in a community where you see occasionally people jogging or cycling, um, why pursue athletic excellence? And we give two reasons, two main reasons. First, athletics is st athletic excellence is still one of the few areas where you can reach deep down within um, your, whether you want to call it your soul, your personality, your your identity, and you can see how much you have within you. Uh, it's just you. It's just you that you're reaching down into. You're reaching down to basically the elemental core, and you see what's there. Just you and your body and what it can do. Um, I I'll sort of discuss a personal anecdote, which is. I like to um, uh, take my bike and cycle up the mount um, any of the mountain ranges of San the San Gabriel Mountains. These are often 20 mile or 25 mile um, uh, uh, climbs where you're climbing at around three or four percent, and there's no one there, and there's no it's often no cell phone reception, and the only thing you have is your bike and your legs. There's no fuel or anything else, so you're going to get to the top through your legs, and that's it and there's no other way out and so it's just you the mountain gravity and the bike there's nothing else involved in this thing and if you have the mental um, attention and physical um, uh, power you'll make it up if you don't you won't so there's a rawness to it that I think is pretty special um, and uh, what what and how is it it's becoming more special I would argue in a world where to do almost any other thing many other activities you can't just rely on yourself. It's not that you don't reach into that elemental core. To um, to do many things nowadays, you have to send email after email begging people to invest in you or to buy something from you. Um, you might need to take out a huge loan from a bank to get off the ground. 
um, uh, and all these other things. You need other people in a way that athletics, you don't need them, and you're also not reaching the inner core in the same direct physical way that you, um, you do with athletics. So again, with athletics, it's just you, a bike, a pair of shoes, or a ball, and that's it, and it's your, it's your, it's yourself, and it's your mind, it's your body, and it's, and that's it. There's nothing else there. So it's sort of a unique sort of place where you can confront the self, and, and you may, I think, over time, if you pursue athletic excellence, you might find that you're rather impressed with what you have within. Uh, the second reason is that, um, why we should pursue athletic excellence, is that, um, with, in pursuing it in this way, you have, again, another rare area of life where you have an undivided mind, an undivided mind focused on one, <coughs> focused on one thing and giving its maximal effort uh, without any sense of doubt or guilt or shame to achieve that one thing. Um, again, think about um, the cyclist about to go on, on, on the uh, mountain ride up. Um, his mind is focused on how to get to the top of the mountain it's all, all the, all the sense impressions that are coming. It's all being filtered in to get up to the mountain, to, to figure out how to get there the best way. There's no sense of doubt or guilt or, as to what the person's doing. You're focused intensely on this one activity of getting to the top of the mountain. And I would argue it's very rare in life that we can act in such a free, undivided, unconflicted manner. Uh, without any sort of guilt or doubt or shame in an activity. With a lot of other activities, there's a lot of second guessing, a lot of doubt as to whether we're doing this the right way or shame that we did this activity. It's not like this with ac ac athletic excellence. It's a very invigorating thing to be able to act in sort of a simple, direct, raw way without any penalty or doubt or guilt about what you're doing. And I think athletic excellence offers you this very invigorating, free, and liberating opportunity to do this. So in light of this, I would argue that we should all make a max effort to the extent we are personally capable of. We all, of course, have certain physical limitations, including age and physical condition, body style, many other things. Um, for example, I would never, despite no ever how hard I wanted it, uh, how much I trained, I would never become an NBA center because I'm 5'5". Five five. Um, but anyway, I think we should all make a max effort to pursue athletic excellence in, in our in a well-suited athletic activity, uh, and I would, and I want to say that, um, and I think that if you make this max effort, you will most likely see very huge improvements um, uh, if you have consistent training. Um, you might see the biggest in terms of numerical or absolute improvement in the beginning as you're just starting because you're making huge, huge strides very quickly. But I would argue the most meaningful improvements come later when you already reached a pretty high point and you're starting to get even beyond that point where you thought you would never go and I think um, that's kind of the most meaningful um, achievements that you can have is when you set a pretty high bar and you go even beyond that. It's what athletes always talk about in terms of what drives them and why they don't uh, give up even after achieving very high levels of success. Uh, for example, most uh, you know, most elite athletes are driven. They seem very driven, and you would think, why? You know, because they've already achieved so many things. And I think part of it is that is those last those last couple things that they haven't achieved, or that they think that they can reach even a higher level is is a very is a, it offers a very rewarding achievement, um, and it's more more rewarding than sort of the perhaps bigger um, numerical or percentage wise improvements early on. Um, and so the key always is, though, I would argue, to, to get either the initial improvements or the later, more meaningful improvements. The key is to uh, have the quality and consistency of, of training and dedication to the athletic, act athletic excellence over many years. Um, and, and the problem, I think, today is that uh, most people either expect too much too fast and, and they get discouraged and give up. They expect it to, to sort of become excellent at, at some, some activity within maybe three months to six months, and that's just not realistic. Or I would argue many expect to get by with little or no training. There was a survey of UK marathoners who sh which showed that most runners within uh, UK marathons ran only 20 miles, 25 miles per week in training. Well, that's nuts. How can you expect to run that much in training and then run 26 miles in a day and feel good and run a good time doing it in a day when you're not even running that in a whole week? And training so that's unrealistic and I think part of it again um, it could be what's happened to attention spans it could be uh, what's happened in terms of uh, people uh, 
having various entitlements or people uh, or being um, flattered in many is very there's many different reasons but I think the core result is that athletic excellence is not being pursued uh, even in, even with a lot of people involved in sports but but I think it is something that that should be pursued so we'll continue these reflections on athletic excellence in, a, in an upcoming post because I think it is it is a very important um, area of, of human good and excellence and well-being that deserves um, careful, careful thought. So we'll talk to you shortly. Bye-bye.